In this tutorial, I will show how to compare some of these results you get from DASIM with these room types with a different facade layout. Here is the result of the studies with DASIM with these three kind of facade and windows layout for these rooms. From DASIM you actually can get eight different visual output. And if we zoom in, we have first the, the most common way of looking on light, the daylight factor. And that is defined by the ratio of indoor illuminance at a point of interest to the outdoor horizontal illuminance under a overcast sky. The second one, the daylight antonomy, is determined by a point in a building defined as a percentage of the occupied time per year when the minimum illuminance level can be maintained by daylight only. And the big difference between daylight factor and daylight antonomy is that daylight antonomy consider all sky condition and not only a overcast sky. And if we go a little further down, we have the continuous daylight antonomy and in contrast to the conventional daylight antonomy this shows the time steps when the daylight illuminance is below the minimum illuminant levels and this level is the the criteria you put up in the beginning of your simulation in this case 500 lux as well for the continuous daylight antonomy instead of hard threshold the transition between complements and non-complements becomes so often because many office occupants tend to work at lower daylight levels so this is a more adaptive way of how the the light or the room actually is used in relation to the light levels so many people don't switch on the electrical lights even if the light levels is below 500 lux this one the daylight autonomy max values indicates the percentages of the occupied hours when direct sunlight or, or high daylight condition are present and these can result in uncomfortable glare with the concept one or a have a higher potential of glare and uncomfortable visual comfort at the facade and the opposite is for the concept tree here another way of looking at daylight is useful daylight illuminance and this is typical done in three steps the first one lux under 100 and then the useful part 100 to 2000 lux and this is based on experience and interview occupants and the last one lux over 2000 and this can tell you something about again if the potential of glare so concept one have a higher potential of glare than the two others the last one, daylight saturation percentages, is a modification of useful daylight illuminance that increases the, the lower limit to 430 lux and the upper limit to 4300. And it determines the values represent the percentages of the floor area that meets the daylight saturation percentages criteria at least 50% of the time. This is another way of looking at useful daylight and to take the, the whole overview again, you could say if you look at daylight, then concept one is the best one. There is most daylight, the percentage is around two, and the lowest one is around 1.3. But if you then go down to look at the useful daylight, then actually concept three and two maybe have the best performance because there's less potential of glare. And we can see here, this is the indication of here could there be a glare and especially down here you can use these information two ways you could either say all right i choosing this one that's the most passive concept or you could say if i choose this one it have the best light distribution into the deeper into the room as you can see here if you're choosing this one then you have to have to think of maybe using some kind of shading device and the last comment you can not only look at visual comfort you need also to look at the thermal comfort and the energy consumption 